this is the introduction to the bridal of triermain by sir walter scott this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nathan at antipodeanwriter dot wordpress dot com the bridal of triermain by sir walter scott introduction come lucy while tis morning hour the woodland brook we needs must pass so ere the sun assume his power we shelter in our poplar bower where dew lies long upon the flower though vanished from the velvet grass curbing the stream this stony ridge may serve us for a sylvan bridge for here compelled to disunite round petty isles the runnels glide and chafing off their puny spite the shallow murmurers waste their might yielding to footstep free and light a dry-shod pass from side to side nay why this hesitating pause and lucy as thy step withdraws why sidelong eye the streamlet's brim titania's foot without a slip like thine though timid light and slim from stone to stone might safely trip nor risk the glow-worm clasp to dip that binds her slippers silken rim or trust thy lover's strength nor fear that this same stalwart arm of mine which could yon oak's prone trunk uprear shall shrink beneath the burden dear of form so slender light and fine so now the danger dared at last look back and smile at perils past and now we reach the favourite glade piled in by copsewood cliff and stone we never harsher sounds invade to break affection's whispering tone than the deep breeze that waves the shade than the small brooklet's feeble moan come rest thee on thy wonted seat mossed is the stone the turf is green a place where lovers best may meet who would not that their love be seen the boughs that dim the summer sky shall hide us from each lurking spy that fain would spread the invidious tale how lucy of the lofty eye noble in birth in fortunes high she for whom lords and barons sigh meets her poor arthur in the dale how deep that blush how deep that sigh and why does lucy shun mine eye is it because that crimson draws its colour from some secret cause some hidden movement of the breast she would not that her arthur guessed oh quicker far is lovers ken than the dull glance of common men and by strange sympathy can spell the thoughts the loved one will not tell and mine in lucy's blush saw met the hues of pleasure and regret pride mingled in the sigh her voice and shared with love the crimson glow well pleased that thou art arthur's choice yet shamed thine own is placed so low thou turnest thy self-confessing cheek as if to meet the breezes cooling then lucy hear thy tutor speak for love too has his hours of schooling too oft my anxious eye has spied that secret grief thou fain wouldst hide the passing pang of humbled pride too oft when through the splendid hall the lodestar of each heart and eye my fair one leads the glittering ball will her stolen glance on arthur fall with such a blush and such a sigh thou wouldst not yield for wealth or rank the heart thy worth and beauty won nor leave me on this mossy bank to meet a rival on a throne why then should vain repinings rise that to thy lover fate denies a nobler name a wide domain a baron's birth a menial train since heaven assigned him for his part a lyre a falchion and a heart my sword its master must be done but when a soldier names my name approach my lucy fearless come nor dread to hear of arthur's shame my heart mid all yon 
courtly crew of lordly rank and lofty line is there to love and honour true that boasts a pulse so warm as mine they praise thy diamonds lustre rare matched with thine eyes i thought it faded they praised the pearls that bound thy hair i only saw the locks they braided they talked of wealthy dower and land and titles of high birth the token i thought of lucy's heart and hand nor knew the sense of what was spoken and yet if ranked in fortune's roll i might have learned their choice unwise who rate the dower above the soul and lucy's diamonds over her eyes my lyre it is an idle toy that borrows accents not its own like warbler of columbian sky that sings but in a mimic tone never did it sound over sainted well nor boasts it aught of border spell its strings no feudal slogan pour its heroes draw no broad claymore no shout in clans applauses raise because it sung their father's praise on scottish moor or english down it never was graced with fair renown nor one best mead to minstrel true one favouring smile from fair buckloo by one poor streamlet sounds its tone and heard by one dear maid alone but if thou bidst these tones shall tell of errant knight and damozel of the dread knot a wizard tied in punishment of maiden's pride in notes of marvel and of fear that best may charm romantic ear for lucy loves like colin's ill-starred name whose lay's requital was that tardy fame who bound no laurel round his living head should hang it over his monument when dead for lucy loves to tread the enchanted strand and thread like him the maze of fairy land of golden battlements to view the gleam and slumber soft by some elysian stream such lays she loves and such my lucy's choice what other song can claim her poet's voice End of introduction. Recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com Canto first to the bridal of Triamain. This is part one of the bridal of Triamain by Sir Walter Scott. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com. The Bridal of Triamain by Sir Walter Scott, Part One, Canto First. Where is the maiden of mortal strain that may match with the baron of Triamain? She must be lovely and constant and kind holy and pure and humble of mind blithe of cheer and gentle of mood courteous and generous and noble of blood lovely as the sun's first ray when it breaks the clouds of an april day constant and true as the widowed dove kind as a minstrel that sings of love pure as the fountain in rocky cave where never sunbeam kissed the wave humble as maiden that loves in vain holy as hermit's vesper strain gentle as breeze that but whispers and dies yet blithe as the light leaves that dance in its sighs courteous as monarch the morn he is crowned generous as spring dews that bless the glad ground noble her blood as the currents that meet in the veins of the noblest planter genete such must her form be her mood and her strain that shall match with sir roland of trier may sir roland de vaux he hath laid him to sleep his blood it was fevered his breathing was deep he had been pricking against the scot the foray was long and the skirmish hot his dinted helm and his buckler's plight bore token of a stubborn fight 
all in the castle must hold them still harpers must lull him to his rest with the slow soft tunes he loves the best till sleep sink down upon his breast like the dew on a summer hill it was the dawn of an autumn day the sun was struggling with frost fog grey that like a silvery crape was spread round skiddaw's dim and distant head and faintly gleamed each painted pane of the lordly halls of tria main when that baron bold awoke starting he woke and loudly did call rousing his menials in bower and hall while hastily he spoke hearken my minstrels which of ye all touched his harp with that dying fall so sweet so soft so faint it seemed an angel's whispered call to an expiring saint and hearken my merry men what time or where did she pass that maid with her heavenly brow with her look so sweet and her eyes so fair and her graceful step and her angel air and the eagle plume in her dark brown hair that passed from my bower even now answered him richard de britville he was chief of the baron's minstrelsy silent noble chieftain we have sat since midnight close when such lulling sounds as the brooklet sings murmured from our melting strings and hushed you to repose had a harp note sounded here it had caught my watchful ear although it fell as faint and shy as bashful maiden's half-formed sigh when she thinks her lover near answered philip a fast weight tall he kept guard in the outer hall since at eve our watch took post not a foot has thy portal crossed else had i heard the steps though low and light they fell as when earth receives in morn of frost the withered leaves that drop when no winds blow then come thou hither henry my page whom i saved from the sack of hermitage when that dark castle tower and spire rose to the skies a pile of fire and reddened all the night stain hill and the shrieks of death that wildly broke through devouring flame and smothering smoke made the warrior's heart blood chill the trustiest thou of all my train my fleetest courser thou must reign and ride to luolf's tower and from the baron of triermain greet well that sage of power he is sprung from druid sires and british bards that tuned their lyres to arthur's and pendragon's praise and his who sleeps at dunmail rays gifted like his gifted race he the characters can trace graven deep in elder time upon helvellyn's cliffs sublime sign and sigil well doth he know and can bode of weal and woe of kingdoms all and fate of wars from mystic dreams and course of stars he shall tell if middle earth to that enchanting shape gave birth or if twas but an airy thing such as fantastic slumbers bring framed from the rainbow's varying dyes or fading tints of western skies for by the blessed rood i swear if that fair form breathe vital air no other maiden by my side shall ever rest de Vaux's bride a faithful page he mounts his steed and soon he crossed green earthing's mead dashed o'er kirk oswald's verdant plain and eden barred his course in vain he passed red penrith's table round for feats of chivalry renowned left mayburg's mound and stones of power by druids raised in magic hour and traced the ilmont's winding way till Alfo's lake beneath him lay onward he rode 
the pathway still winding betwixt the lake and hill till on the fragment of a rock struck from its base by lightning shock he saw the hoary sage the silver moss and lichen twined with fern and deer hair cheeked and lined a cushion fit for age and over him shook the aspen tree a restless rustling canopy then sprung young henry from his cell and greeted lyulf grave and then his master's tale did tell and then for counsel crave the man of years mused long and deep of time's lost treasures taking keep and then as rousing from a sleep his solemn answer gave that maid is born of middle earth and may of man be one though there have glided since her birth five hundred years and one but where's the knight in all the north that dare the adventure follow forth so perilous to knightly worth in the valley of st john listen youth to what i tell and bind it on thy memory well nor muse that i commence the rhyme far distant mid the wrecks of time the mystic tale by bard and sage is handed down from merlin's age Lyulf's tale. king arthur has ridden from merry carlisle when pentecost was over he journeyed like errant knight the while and sweetly the summer sun did smile on mountain moss and moor above his solitary track rose glara mara's ridgy back amid whose yawning gulfs the sun cast umbered radiance red and dun though never sunbeam could discern the surface of that sable tarn and whose black mirror you may spy the stars while noontide lights the sky the gallant king he skirted still the margin of that mighty hill rock upon rocks incumbent hung and torrents down the gullies flung joined the rude river that brawled on recoiling now from crag and stone now diving deep from human ken and raving down its darksome glen the monarch judged this desert wild with such romantic ruin piled was theatre by nature's hand for feet of high achievement planned o oh, rather he chose that monarch bold on venturous quest to ride in plate and mail by wood and wold then with ermine trapped and cloth of gold in princely bower to bide the bursting crash of a foeman's spear as it shivered against his mail was merrier music to his ear than courtiers whispered tale and the clash of caliburn more dear when on the hostile cask it rung than all the lays to their monarch's praise that the harpers of regged sung he loved better to rest by wood or river than the bower of his bride dame guinevere for he left that lady so lovely of cheer to follow adventures of danger and fear and the frank-hearted monarch full little did wot that she smiled in his absence on brave lancelot he rode till over down and dell the shade more broad and deeper fell and though around the mountain's head flowed streams of purple and gold and red dark at the base unblessed by beam frowned the black rocks and roared the stream with toil the king his way pursued by lonely throckeld's waste and wood till on his course obliquely shone the narrow valley of st john down sloping to the western sky where lingering sunbeams love to lie right glad to feel those beams again the king drew up his charger's rein with gauntlet raised he screened his sight as dazzled with the level light and from beneath his glove of mail scanned at his ease the lovely veil while gainst the sun his armour bright gleamed ruddy like the beacon's light
paled in by many a lofty hill the narrow dale lay smooth and still and down its verdant bosom led a winding brooklet found its bed but midmost of the vale a mound arose with airy turrets crowned buttress and rampires circling bound and mighty keep and tower seemed some primeval giant's hand the castle's massive walls had planned a ponderous bulwark to withstand ambitious nimrod's power above the moated entrance slung the balanced drawbridge trembling hung as jealous of a foe wicket of oak as iron hard with iron studded clenched and barred and pronged portcullis joined to guard the gloomy pass below but the grey walls no banners crowned upon the watch-towers airy round no warder stood his horn to sound no guard beside the bridge was found and where the gothic gateway frowned glanced neither bill nor bow beneath the castle's gloomy pride it ample round did arthur ride three times nor living thing he spied nor heard a living sound save that awakening from her dream the owlet now began to scream in concert with the rushing stream that washed the battled mound he lighted from his goodly steed and he left him to graze on bank and mead and slowly he climbed the narrow way that reached the entrance grim and grey and he stood the outward arch below and his bugle horn prepared to blow in summons blithe and bold deeming to rouse from iron sleep the guardian of this dismal keep which well he guessed the hold of wizard stern or goblin grim or pagan of gigantic limb the tyrant of the wold the ivory bugle's golden tip twice touched the monarch's manly lip and twice his hand withdrew think not but arthur's heart was good his shield was crossed by the blessed rood had a pagan host before him stood he had charged them through and through yet the silence of that ancient place sunk on his heart and he paused a space ere yet his horn he blew but instant as its larum rung the castle gate was open flung portcullis rose with crashing groan full harshly up its groove of stone the balance beams obeyed the blast and down the trembling drawbridge cast the vaulted arch before him lay with nought to bar the gloomy way and onward arthur paced with hand on caliburn's resistless brand a hundred torches flashing bright dispelled at once the gloomy night that lowered along the walls and showed the king's astonished sight the inmates of the halls nor wizard stern nor goblin grim nor giant huge of form and limb nor heathen knight was there but the cressets which odours flung aloft showed by their yellow light and soft a band of damsels fair onward they came like summer wave that dances to the shore an hundred voices welcome gave and welcome o'er and o'er an hundred lovely hands assail the bucklers of the monarch's mail and busy laboured to unhasp rivet of steel and iron clasp one wrapped him in a mantle fair and one flung odours on his hair his short curled ringlets one smoothed down one wreathed them with a myrtle crown a bride upon her wedding day was tended never by troop so gay loud laughed they all the king in vain with questions tasked the giddy train let him entreat or crave or call twas one reply loud laughed they all then over him mimic chains they fling framed of the fairest flowers of spring while some their gentle force unite onward to drag the wandering knight some bolder urge his pace with blows dealt with the lily or the rose behind him were 
in triumph borne the warlike arms he late had worn four of the train combined to rear the terrors of tintadgil's spear two laughing at their lack of strength dragged caliburn in cumbrous length one while she aped a martial stride placed on her brows the helmet's pride then screamed twixt laughter and surprise to feel its depth overwhelm her eyes with revel shout and triumph song thus gaily marched the giddy throng through many a gallery and hall they led i ween their royal thrall at length beneath a fair arcade their march and song at once they stayed the eldest maiden of the band the lovely maid was scarce eighteen raised with imposing air her hand and reverent silence did command on entrance of their queen and they were mute but as a glance they steal on arthur's countenance bewildered with surprise their smothered mirth again gan speak in archly dimpled chin and cheek and laughter lighted eyes the attributes of those high days now only live in minstrel lays for nature now exhausted still was then profuse of good and ill strength was gigantic valour high and wisdom soared beyond the sky and beauty had such matchless beam as lights not now a lover's dream yet even in that romantic age never were such charms by mortal seen as arthur's dazzled eyes engage when forth on that enchanted stage with glittering train of maid and page advanced the castle's queen while up the hall she slowly passed her dark eye on the king she cast that flashed expression strong the longer dwelt that lingering look her cheek the livelier colour took and scarce the shame-faced king could brook the gaze that lasted long a sage who had that look espied where kindling passion strove with pride had whispered prince beware from the chafed tiger rend the prey rush on the lion when at bay bar the fell dragon's blighted way but shun that lovely snare at once that inward strife suppressed the dame approached her warlike guest with greeting in that fair degree where female pride and courtesy are blended with such passing art as awes at once and charms the heart a courtly welcome first she gave then of his goodness gan to crave construction fair and true of her light maiden's idle mirth who drew from lonely glens their birth nor knew to pay to stranger worth and dignity their due and then she prayed that he would rest that night her castle's honoured guest the monarch meetly thanks expressed the banquet rose at her behest with lay and tale and laugh and jest apace the evening flew the lady sate the monarch by now in her turn abashed and shy and with indifference seemed to hear the toys he whispered in her ear the bearing modest was and fair yet shadows of constraint were there that showed an over-cautious care some inward thought to hide oft did she pause in full reply and oft cast down her large dark eye oft checked the soft voluptuous sigh that heaved her bosom's pride slight symptoms these but shepherds know how hot the midday sun shall glow from the mist of morning sky and so the wily monarch guessed that this assumed restraint expressed more ardent passions in the breast than ventured to the eye closer he pressed while beakers rang while maidens laughed and minstrels sang still closer to her ear but why pursue the common tale or wherefore show how knights prevail where ladies dare to hear or wherefore trace from what slight cause its source one tyrant passion draws till mastering all within 
where lives the man that has not tried how mirth can into folly glide and folly into sin end of part one recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter dot wordpress dot com canto second to the bridal of triermain this is part two of the bridal of triermain by sir walter scott this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nathan at antipodean writer dot wordpress dot com the bridal of triermain by sir walter scott part two canto second leof's tale continued another day another day and yet another glides away the saxon stern pagan dane maraud on britain's shores again arthur of christendom the flower lies loitering in a lady's bower the horn that foemen want to fear sounds but to wake the cumbrian deer and caliburn the british pride hangs useless by a lover's side another day another day and yet another glides away heroic plans in pleasure drowned he thinks not of the table round in lawless love dissolved his life he thinks not of his beauteous wife better he loves to snatch a flower from bosom of his paramour than from a saxon knight to wrest the honours of his heathen crest better to wreathe mid tresses brown the heron's plume her hawk struck down than over the altar give to flow the banners of a paynim foe thus week by week and day by day his life inglorious glides away but she that soothes his dream with fear beholds his hour of waking near much force have mortal charms to stay our peace in virtue's toilsome way but gwendolen's might far outshine each maid of merely mortal line her mother was of human birth her sire a genie of the earth in days of old deemed to preside over lovers wiles and beauty's pride by youths and virgins worshipped long with festive dance and choral song till when the cross to britain came on heathen altars died the flame now deep in wastdale solitude the downfall of his rights he rude and born of his resentment ere he trained to guile that lady fair to sink in slothful sin and shame the champions of the christian name well skilled to keep vain thoughts alive and all to promise nought to give the timid youth had hope in store the bold and pressing gained no more as wilded children leave their home after the rainbow's arch to roam her lover's bartered fair esteem faith fame and honour for a dream the sire's soft arts the soul to tame she practised thus till arthur came then frail humanity had part and all the mother claimed her heart forgot each rule her father gave sunk from a princess to a slave too late must gwendolen deplore he that has all can hope no more now must she see her lover strain at every turn her feeble chain watch to new bind each knot and shrink to view each fast decaying link art she invokes to nature's aid her vest to zone her locks to braid each varied pleasure heard her call the feast the tourney and the ball her storied law she next applies taxing her mind to aid her eyes now more than mortal wise and then in female softness sunk again now raptured with each wish complying now feigned reluctance now denying each charm she varied to retain a varying heart and all in vain thus in the garden's narrow bound 
flanked by some castle's gothic round fain would the artist's skill provide the limits of his realms to hide the walks in labyrinths he twines shade after shade with skill combines with many a varied flowery knot and copse and arbour decks the spot tempting the hasty foot to stay and linger on the lovely way vain art vain hope tis fruitless all at length we reach the bounding wall and sick of flower and trim dressed tree long for rough glades and forest free three summer months had scantly flown when arthur in embarrassed tone spoke of his liegeman and his throne said all too long had been his stay and duties which a monarch sway duties unknown to humbler men must tear her knight from gwendolen she listened silently the while her mood expressed in bitter smile beneath her eye must arthur quail and oft resume the unfinished tale confessing by his downcast eye the wrong he sought to justify he ceased a moment mute she gazed and then her looks to heaven she raised one palm the temples veiled to hide the tear that sprung in spite of pride the other for an instant pressed the foldings of her silken vest at her reproachful sign and look the hint the monarch's conscience took eager he spoke no lady no deem not of british arthur so nor think he can desert approve to the dear pledge of mutual love i swear by sceptre and by sword as belted knight and britain's lord that if a boy shall claim my care that boy is born a kingdom's heir but if a maiden fate allows to choose that maid a fitting spouse a summer day in lists shall strive my knights the bravest knights alive and he the best and bravest tried shall arthur's daughter claim for bride he spoke with voice resolved and high the lady dined him not reply at dawn of morn ere on the break his matins did a warbler make or stirred his wing to brush away a single dewdrop from the spray ere yet a sunbeam through the mist the castle battlements had kissed the gates revolve the drawbridge falls and arthur sallies from the walls doffed his soft garb of persia's loom and steel from spur to helmet plume his libyan steed full proudly trod and joyful neighed beneath his load the monarch gave a passing sigh to penitence and pleasures by when lo to his astonished ken appeared the form of gwendolen beyond the outmost wall she stood attired like huntress of the wood sandalled her feet her ankles bare and eagle plumage decked her hair firm was her look her bearing bold and in her hand a cup of gold thou goest she said and never again must we two meet in joy or pain full fain would i this hour delay though weak the wish yet wilt thou stay no thou lookest forward still attend part we like lover and like friend she raised the cup not this the juice the sluggish vines of earth produce pledge we at parting in the draught which genii love she said and quaffed and strange unwonted lustres fly from her flushed cheek and sparkling eye the courteous monarch bent him low and stooping from the saddle bow lifted the cup in act to drink a drop escaped the goblet's brink intense as liquid fire from hell upon the charger's neck it fell screaming with agony and fright he bolted twenty feet upright the peasant still can show the dint where his hoofs lighted on the flint from arthur's hand the goblet flew scattering a shower of fiery dew that burned and blighted where it fell the frantic steed rushed up the dell as whistles from the bow the reed nor bit nor rein could check his speed until he gained the hill 
then breath and sinew failed apace and reeling from the desperate race he stood exhausted still the monarch breathless and amazed back on the fatal castle gazed nor tower nor dungeon could he spy darkening against the morning sky but on the spot where once they frowned the lonely streamlet brawled around a tufted knoll where dimly shone fragments of rock and rifted stone musing on this strange hap the while the king wends back to fair carlisle and cares that cumber royal sway or memory of the past away full fifteen years and more were sped each brought new wreaths to arthur's head twelve bloody fields with glory fought the saxons to subjection brought Rhythm, the mighty giant slain by his good brand relieved bretagne the pictish gillamore in fight and roman lucius owned his might and wide were through the world renowned the glories of his table round each knight who sought adventurous fame to the bold court of britain came and all who suffered causeless wrong from tyrant proud or fater strong sought arthur's presence to complain nor there for aid implored in vain for this the king with pomp and pride held solemn court at whitsuntide and summoned prince and peer all who owed homage for their land or who craved knighthood from his hand or who had succour to demand to come from far and near at such high tide where glee and game mingled with feats of martial fame for many a stranger champion came in lists to break a spear and not a knight of arthur's host save that he trode some foreign coast but at this feed of pentecost before him must appear ah minstrels when the table round arose with all its warriors crowned there was a theme for bards to sound in triumph to their string five hundred years are past and gone but time shall draw his dying groan ere he behold the british throne begirt with such a ring the heralds named the appointed spot as cala leon or camelot or carlisle fair and free at penrith now the feast was set and in fair yeomont's vale were met the flower of chivalry there galahad sate with manly grace yet maiden meekness in his face there morolt of the iron mace and lovelorn tristram there and dinadam with lively glance and lanvel with the fairy lance and mordred with his look askance brunor and bevedere why should i tell of numbers more sir kay sir Baniel, and sir bore sir caradac the keen the gentle gawain's courteous law hector de Marez, and pellinore and lancelot that evermore looked stolen wise on the queen when wine and mirth did most abound and harpers played their blithest round a shrilly trumpet shook the ground and marshals cleared the ring a maiden on a palfrey white heading a band of damsels bright paced through the circle to alight and kneel before the king arthur with strong emotion saw her graceful boldness checked by awe her dress like huntress of the wold her bow and baldric trapped with gold her sandalled feet her ankles bare and the eagle plume that decked her hair graceful her veil she backward flung the king as from his seat he sprung almost cried gwendolen but twas a face more frank and wild betwixt the woman and the child where less of magic beauty smiled than of the race of men and in the forehead's haughty grace the lines of britain's royal race pendragons you might ken faltering yet gracefully she said great prince behold an orphan maid in her departed mother's name a father's vowed protection claim the vow was sworn 
in desert lone in the deep valley of st john at once the king the suppliant raised and kissed her brow her beauty praised his vow he said should well be kept ere in the sea the sun was dipped then conscious glanced upon his queen but she unruffled at the scene of human frailty construed mild looked upon lancelot and smiled up up each knight of gallant crest take buckler spear and brand he that to-day shall bear him best shall win my gwyneth's hand and arthur's daughter when a bride shall bring a noble dower both fair strathclyde and regged wide and carlisle town and tower then might you hear each valiant knight to page and squire that cried bring my armour bright and my courser white tis not each day that a warrior's might may win a royal bride then cloaks and caps of maintenance in haste aside they fling the helmets glance and gleams the lance and the steel-weaved hauberks ring small care had they of their peaceful array they might gather it that wold for brake and bramble glittered gay with pearls and cloth of gold within trumpet sound of the table round were fifty champions free and they all arise to fight that prize they all arise but three nor love's fond troth nor wedlock's oath one gallant could withhold for priests will allow of a broken vow for penance or for gold but sigh and glance from ladies bright among the troop were thrown to plead their right and true love plight and plain of honour flown the knights they busied them so fast with buckling spur and belt that sigh and look by ladies cast were neither seen nor felt from pleading or upbraiding glance each gallant turns aside and only thought if speeds my lance a queen becomes my bride she has fair strathclyde and regged wide and carlisle tower and town she is the loveliest maid beside that ever aired a crown so in haste their courses they bestride and strike their visors down the champions armed in martial sort have thronged into the list and but three knights of arthur's court are from the tourney missed and still these lovers fame survives for faith so constant shown there were two who loved their neighbours wives and one who loved his own the first was lancelot de lac the second tristram bold the third was valiant carodac who won the cup of gold what time of all king arthur's crew thereof came jeer and laugh he as the mate of lady true alone the cup could quaff though envy's tongue would fain surmise that but for very shame sir caradac to fight that prize had given both cup and dame yet since but one of that fair court was true to wedlock's shrine brand him who will with base report he shall be free from mine now caracold the steeds in air now plumes and pennons wantoned fair as all around the lists so wide in panoply the champions ride king arthur saw with startled eye the flower of chivalry march by the bulwark of the christian creed the kingdom's shield in hour of need too late he thought him of the woe might from their civil conflict flow for well he knew they would not part till cold was many a gallant heart his hasty vow he gan to rue and gwyneth then apart he drew to her his leading staff resigned but added caution grave and kind thou seest my child as promise bound i bid the trump for tourney sound take thou my warder as the queen and umpire of the martial scene but mark thou this as beauty bright is polar star to valiant knight as at her word his sword he draws his fairest gird on her applause so gentle maid should never ask of knighthood vain and dangerous task and beauty's eyes should ever be 
like the twin stars that soothe the sea and beauty's breath shall whisper peace and bid the storm of battle cease i tell thee this lest all too far these knights urge tourney into war blithe at the trumpet let them go and fairly counter blow for blow no striplings these who succour need for a raised helm or falling steed but gwyneth when the strife grows warm and threatens death or deadly harm thy sire entreats thy king commands thou drop the warder from thy hounds trust thou thy father with thy fate doubt not he choose thee fitting mate nor be it said through gwyneth's pride a rose of arthur's chaplet died a proud and discontented glow overshadowed gwyneth's brow of snow she put the warder by reserve thy boon my liege she said thus chafed down and limited debased and narrowed for a maid of less degree than i no petty chief but holds his heir at a more honoured price and rare than britain's king holds me although the sunburned maid for dower has but her father's rugged tower his barren hill and lee king arthur swore by crown and sword as belted knight and britain's lord that a whole summer's day should strive his knights the bravest knights alive recall thine oath and to her glen poor gwyneth can return again not on thy daughter will the stain that soils thy sword and crown remain but think not she will ever be bride save to the bravest proved and tried pendragon's daughter will not fear for clashing sword or splintered spear nor shrink though blood should flow and all too well sad gwendolen hath taught the faithlessness of men that child of hers should pity when their meed they undergo he frowned and sighed the monarch bold i give what i may not withhold for not for danger dread or death must british arthur break his faith too late i mark thy mother's art hath taught thee this relentless part i blame her not for she had wrong but not to these my faults belong use then the warder as thou wilt but trust me that if life be spilt in arthur's love in arthur's grace gwyneth shall lose a daughter's place with that he turned his head aside nor brooked to gaze upon her pride as with the truncheon raised she sate the arbitress of mortal fate nor brooked to mark in ranks disposed how the bold champions stood opposed for shrill the trumpet flourish fell upon his ear like passing bell then first from sight of martial fray did britain's hero turn away but gwyneth heard the clangour high as hears the hawk the partridge cry o oh, blame her not the blood was hers that at the trumpet's summons stirs and even the gentlest female eye might the brave strife of chivalry a while untroubled view so well accomplished was each knight to strike and to defend in fight their meeting was a goodly sight while plate and mail held true the lists with painted plumes were strown upon the wind at random thrown but helm and breastplate bloodless shone it seemed their feathered crests alone should this encounter rue and ever as the combat grows the trumpet's cheery voice arose like lark's shrill song the flourish flows heard while the gale of april blows the merry greenwood through but soon to earnest grew their game the swords drew blood the swords struck flame and horse and man to ground there came knights who shall rise no more gone was the pride the war that graced gay shields were cleft and crests defaced and steel coats riven and helms unbraced and pennons streamed with gore 
gone too were fence and fair array and desperate strength made deadly way at random through the bloody fray and blows were dealt with headlong sway unheeding where they fell and now the trumpet's clamours seem like the shrill sea-bird's wailing scream heard over the whirlpool's golfing stream the sinking seaman's knell seemed in this dismal hour that fate would camlan's ruin antedate and spare dark mordred's crime already gasping on the ground lie twenty of the table round of chivalry the prime arthur in anguish tore away from head and beard his tresses grey and she proud gwyneth felt dismay and quaked with ruth and fear but still she deemed her mother's shade hung over the tumult and forbade the sign that had the slaughter stayed and chid the rising tear then brunor taulus Mador fell helius the white and lionel and many a champion more roshimont and dinadam are down and ferrand of the forest brown lies gasping in his gore vanoc by mighty morolt pressed even to the confines of the list young vanoc of the beardless face fame spoke the youth of merlin's race overpowered at gwyneth's footstool bled his heart's blood dyed her sandals red but then the sky was overcast then howled at once a whirlwind's blast and rent by sudden throes yawned in mid lists the quaking earth and from the gulf tremendous birth the form of merlin rose sternly the wizard prophet eyed the dreary lists with slaughter died and sternly raised his hand madmen he said your strife forbear and thou fair cause of mischief hear the doom thy fates demand long shall close in stony sleep eyes for ruth that would not weep iron lethargy shall seal heart that pity scorned to feel yet because thy mother's art warped thine unsuspicious heart and for love of arthur's race punishment is blent with grace thou shalt bear thy penance lone in the valley of saint john and this weird shall overtake thee sleep until a knight shall wake thee for feats of arms as far renowned as warrior of the table round long endurance of thy slumber well may teach the world to number all their woes from gwyneth's pride when the red cross champions died as merlin speaks on gwyneth's eye slumber's load begins to lie fear and anger vainly strive still to keep its light alive twice with effort and with pause over her brow her hand she draws twice her strength in vain she tries from the fatal chair to rise merlin's magic doom is spoken vanoc's death must now be rocken slow the dark fringed eyelids fall curtaining each azure ball slowly as on summer eves violets fold their dusky leaves the weighty baton of command now bears down her sinking hand on her shoulder droops her head net of pearl and golden thread bursting gave her locks to flow over her arm and breast of snow and so lovely seemed she there spellbound in her ivory chair that her angry sire repenting craved stern merlin for relenting and the champions for her sake would again the contest wake till in necromantic night gwyneth vanished from their sight still she bears her weird alone in the valley of st john and her semblance oft will seem mingling in a champion's dream of her weary lot to plain and crave his aid to burst her chain while her wondrous tale was new warriors to her rescue drew 
east and west and south and north from the liffey thames and forth most have sought in vain the glen tower nor castle could they ken not at every time or tide nor by every eye descried fast and vigil must be borne many a night in watching worn ere an eye of mortal powers can discern those magic towers of the persevering few some from hopeless task withdrew when they read the dismal threat graved upon the gloomy gate few have braved the yawning door and those few returned no more in the lapse of time forgot well nigh lost is gwyneth's lot sound her sleep as in the tomb till wakened by the trump of doom end of life's tale here pause my tale for all too soon my lucy comes the hour of noon already from thy lofty dome its courtly inmates gin to roam and each to kill the goodly day that god has granted them his way of lazy sauntering has sought lordlings and witlings not a few incapable of doing aught yet ill at ease with naught to do here is no longer place for me for lucy thou wouldst blush to see some phantom fashionably thin with limb of lath and kerchiefed chin and lounging gape or sneering grin still sudden on our privacy and how should i so humbly born endure the graceful spectre's scorn faith ill i fear while conjuring wand of english oak is hard at hand or grant the hour be all too soon for hessian boot and pantaloon and grant the lounger seldom strays beyond the smooth and gravelled maze lord we the gods that fashion's train holds hearts of more adventurous strain artists are hers who scorn to trace their rules from nature's boundless grace but their right paramount assert to limit her by pedant art damning whatever of vast and fair exceeds a canvas three feet square this thicket for their gumption fit may furnish such a happy bit bards too are hers want to recite their own sweet lays by waxen light half in the salvers tingle drowned while the chasse glides around and such may hither secret stray to labour and extempore or sportsman with his boisterous hollo may hear his wiser spaniel follow or stage-struck juliet may presume to choose this bower for tiring room and we alike must shun regard from painter player sportsman bard insects that skim in fashion's sky wasp bluebottle or butterfly lucy have all alarms for us for all can hum and all can buzz but o oh, my lucy say how long we still must dread this trifling throng and stoop to hide with coward art the genuine feelings of the heart no parents thine whose just command should rule their child's obedient hand thy guardians with contending voice press each his individual choice and which is lucy's can it be that puny fop trimmed cap a pee who loves in the saloon to show the arms that never knew a foe whose sabre trails along the ground whose legs in shapeless boots are drowned a new achilles sure the steel fled from his breast to fence his heel one for the simple manly grace that wont to deck our martial race who comes in foreign trashery 
of tinkling chain and spur a walking haberdashery of feathers lace and fur in rowley's antiquated phrase horse milliner of modern days or is it he the wordy youth so early trained for statesman's part who talks of honour faith and truth as themes that he has got by heart whose ethics chesterfield can teach whose logic is from single speech who scorns the meanest thought to vent save in the phrase of parliament who in the tale of cat and mouse calls order and divides the house who craves permission to reply whose noble friend is in his eye whose loving tender some have reckoned a motion you should gladly second what neither can there be a third to such resistless swains preferred o oh, why my lucy turn aside with that quick glance of injured pride forgive me love i cannot bear that altered and resentful air were all the wealth of russell mine and all the rank of howard's line all would i give for leave to dry that dewdrop trembling in thine eye think not i fear such fops can wile from lucy more than careless smile but yet if wealth and high degree give gilded counters currency must i not fear when rank and birth stamp the pure ore of genuine worth nobles there are whose martial fires rival the fame that raised their sires and patriots skilled through storms of fate to guide and guard the reeling state such such there are if such should come arthur must tremble and be dumb self-exiled seek some distant shore and mourn till life and grief are o'er what sight what signal of alarm that lucy clings to arthur's arm or is it that the rugged way makes beauty lean on lovers stay oh no for on the vale and brake nor sight nor sounds of danger wake and this trim sward of velvet green were carpet for the fairy queen that pressure slight was but to tell that lucy loves her arthur well and fain would banish from his mind suspicious fear and doubt unkind but wouldst thou bid the demons fly like mist before the dawning sky there is but one resistless spell say wilt thou guess or must i tell twere hard to name in minstrel phrase a landolot and for blood bays but bards agree this wizard band can but be bound in northern land tis there nay draw not back thy hand tis there this slender finger round must golden amulet be bound which blessed with many a holy prayer can change to rapture lovers care and doubt and jealousy shall die and fears give place to ecstasy now trust me lucy all too long has been thy lover's tale and song o oh, why so silent love i pray have i not spoke the lifelong day and will not lucy dine to say one word her friend to bless i ask but one a simple sound within three little letters bound o oh, let the word be yes End of part two. Recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com Canto third to the bridal of Triamain. This is part three of the bridal of Triamain by Sir Walter Scott. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nathan at 
antipodean writer dot wordpress dot com the bridal of triomay by sir walter scott part three canto third introduction long loved long wooed and lately won my life's best hope and now my own doth not this rude and alpine glen recall our favourite haunts again a wild resemblance we can trace through reft of every softer grace as the rough warrior's brow may bear a likeness to a sister fair full well advised our highland host that this wild pass on foot be crossed while round ben cruach's mighty base wheel the slow steeds and lingering chase the keen old carl with scottish pride he praised his glen and mountains wide an eye he bears for nature's face ay and for woman's lovely grace even in such mean degree we find the subtle scots observing mind for nor the chariot nor the train could gape of vulgar wonder gain but when old allan would expound of balne baish the celtic sound his bonnet doffed and bow applied his legend to my bonny bride while lucy blushed beneath his eye courteous and cautious shrewd and sly enough of him now ere we lose plunged in the vale the distant views turn thee my love look back once more to the blue lake's retiring shore on its smooth breast the shadows seem like objects in a morning dream what time the slumberer is aware he sleeps and all the visions air even so on yonder liquid lawn in hues of bright reflection drawn distinct the shaggy mountains lie distinct the rocks distinct the sky the summer clouds so plain we note that we might count each dappled spot we gaze and we admire yet no the scene is all delusive show such dreams of bliss would arthur draw when first his lucy's form he saw yet sighed and sickened as he drew despairing they could ever prove true but lucy turn thee now to view up the fair glen our destined way the fairy path that we pursue distinguished but by greener hue winds round the purple bray while alpine flowers of varied dye for carpet serve or tapestry see how the little runnels leap in threads of silver down the steep to swell the brooklet's moan seems that the highland naiad grieves fantastic while her crown she weaves of rowan birch and alder leaves so lovely and so lone there's no illusion there these flowers that wailing brook these lovely boughs are lucy all our own and since thine arthur called thee wife such seems the prospect of his life a lovely path on winding still by gurgling brook and sloping hill tis true that mortals cannot tell what waits them in the distant dell but be it hap or be it harm we tread the pathway arm in arm and now my lucy wottest thou why i could thy bidding twice deny when twice you prayed i would again resume the legendary strain of the bold knight of triomay at length yon peevish vow you swore that you would sue to me no more until the minstrel fit drew near and made me prize a listening ear but loveliest when thou first didst pray continuance of the knightly lay was it not on the happy day that made thy hand mine own when dizzied with mine ecstasy nought past or present or to be could i or think on hear or see save lucy thee alone a giddy draught my rapture was as ever chemist's magic gas again the summons i denied in yon fair capital of clyde my harp 
or let me rather choose the good old classic form my muse for harps an over scutcheon phrase worn out by bards of modern days my muse then seldom will she wake save by dim wood and silent lake she is the wild and rustic maid whose foot unsandalled loves to tread where the soft greensward is inlaid with varied moss and thyme and lest the simple lily braid that coronets her temples fade she hides her still in greenwood shade to meditate her rhyme and now she comes the murmur dear of the wild brook hath caught her ear the glade hath won her eye she longs to join with each blithe rill that dances down the highland hill her blither melody and now my lucy's way to cheer she bids ben cruex echoes hear how closed the tale my love will ear loved for its chivalry list how she tells in notes of flame child roland to the dark tower came End of introduction. How Sir Roland came to the valley of St. John and what he did there. Dear Castle now must keep the hold, Spear Adam's steeds must bide in stall. Of Hartley Burn, the bowman bold must only shoot from battled wall, and Liddesdale may buckle spur, and Tiviot now may belt the brand terras and ewes keep nightly stir and eskdale foray cumberland of wasted fields and plundered flocks the borderers bootless may complain they lack the sword of brave de Vaux. there comes no aid from triermain that lord on high adventure bound hath wandered forth alone and day and night keeps watchful round in the valley of st john when first began his vigil bold the moon twelve summer nights was old and shone both fair and full high in the vault of cloudless blue over streamlet dale and rock she threw her light composed and cool stretched on the brown hills heathy breast sir roland eyed the vale chief where distinguished from the rest those clustering rocks upreared their crest the dwelling of the fair distressed as told grey loaf's tale thus as he lay the lamp of night was quivering on his armour bright in beams that rose and fell and danced upon his buckler's boss that lay beside him on the moss as on a crystal well ever he watched and oft he deemed while on the mound the moonlight streamed it altered to his eyes fain would he hope the rocks gan change to buttressed walls their shapeless range fain think by transmutation strange he saw grey turrets rise but scarce his heart with hope throbbed high before the wild illusions fly which fancy had conceived abetted by an anxious eye that longed to be deceived it was a fond deception all such as in solitary hall beguiles the musing eye when gazing on the sinking fire bulwark and battlement and spire in the red gulf we spy for seen by moon of middle night or by the blaze of noontide bright or by the dawn of morning light or evening's western flame in every tide at every hour in mist in sunshine and in shower the rocks remained the same oft has he traced the charmed mound oft climbed its crest or paced it round yet nothing might explore save that the crags so rudely piled at distance seem resemblance wild to a rough fortress bore yet still his watch the warrior keeps feeds hard and spare and seldom sleeps and drinks but of the well 
ever by day he walks the hill and when the evening gale is chill he seeks a rocky cell like hermit poor to bid his bead and tell his ave and his creed invoking every saint at need for aid to burst his spell and now the moon her orb has hid and dwindled to a silver thread dim seen in middle heaven while over its curve careering fast before the fury of the blast the midnight clouds are driven the brooklet raved for on the hills the upland showers had swollen the rills and down the torrents came muttered the distant thunder dread and frequent over the vale was spread a sheet of lightning flame devo within his mountain cave no human step the storm durst brave to moody meditation gave each faculty of soul till lulled by distant torrent sound and the sad winds that whistled round upon his thoughts in musing drowned a broken slumber stole twas then was heard a heavy sound sound strange and fearful there to hear mongst desert hills where leagues around dwelt but the gorcock and the deer as starting from his couch of fern again he heard in clangour stern that deep and solemn swell twelve times in measured tone it spoke like some proud minster's pealing clock or city's larum bell what thought was roland's first when fell in that deep wilderness the knell upon his startled ear to slander warrior were i loth yet must i hold my minstrel troth it was a thought of fear but lively was the mingled thrill that chased that momentary chill for love's keen wish was there and eager hope and valour high and the proud glow of chivalry that burned to do and dare forth from the cave the warrior rushed long ere the mountain voice was hushed that answered to the knell for long and far the unwonted sound eddying in echoes round and round was tossed from fell to fell and glaramara answer flung and crystal pike responsive rung and legbert heights their echoes swung as far as derwent's dell forth upon trackless darkness gazed the night bedeafened and amazed till all was hushed and still save the swollen torrent's sullen roar and the night blast that wildly bore its course along the hill then on the northern sky there came a light as of reflected flame and over legbert head as if by magic art controlled a mighty meteor slowly rolled its orb of fiery red thou wouldst have thought some demon dire came mounted on that car of fire to do his errand dread far on the sloping valley's course on thicket rock and torrent horse shingle and scray and fell and force a dusky light arose displayed yet altered was the scene dark rock and brook of silver sheen even the gay thickets summer green in bloody tincture glows devo had marked the sunbeams set at eve upon the coronet of that enchanted mound and seen but crags at random flung that over the brawling torrent hung in desolation frowned what sees he by that meteor's lower a bannered castle keep and tower return the lurid gleam with battled walls and buttress fast and barbican and ballium vast and airy flanking towers that cast their shadows on the stream tis no deceit distinctly clear crenel and parapet appear while over the pile that meteor drear makes momentary pause 
then forth its solemn path it drew and fainter yet and fainter grew those gloomy towers upon the view as its wild light withdraws forth from the cave did roland rush over crag and stream through briar and bush yet far he had not sped ere sunk was that portentous light behind the hills and utter night was on the valley spread he paused perforce and blew his horn and on the mountain echoes borne was heard an answering sound a wild and lonely trumpet note in middle air it seemed to float high over the battled mound and sounds were heard as when a guard of some proud castle holding ward pace forth their nightly round the valiant knight of triamain rung forth his challenge blast again but answer came there none and mid the mingled wind and rain darkling he sought the vale in vain until the dawning shone and when it dawned that wondrous sight distinctly seen by meteor light it all had passed away and that enchanted mount once more a pile of granite fragments bore as at the close of day steeled for the deed de Vaux's heart scorned from his venturous quest to part he walks the vale once more but only sees by night or day that shattered pile of rocks so grey hears but the torrent's roar till when through hills of azure borne the moon renewed her silver horn just at the time her waning ray had faded in the dawning day a summer mist arose adown the vale the vapours float and cloudy undulations mote that tufted mound of mystic note as round its base they close and higher now the fleecy tide ascends its stern and shaggy side until the airy billows hide the rock's majestic isle it seemed a veil of filmy lawn by some fantastic fairy drawn a round enchanted pile the breeze came softly down the brook and sighing as it blew the veil of silver mist it shook and to de Vaux's eager look renewed that wondrous view for though the loitering vapour braved the gentle breeze yet oft it waved its mantle's dewy fold and still when shook that filmy screen were towers and bastions dimly seen and gothic battlements between their gloomy length unrolled speed speed de Vaux, ere on thine eye once more the fleeting vision die the gallant knight can speed as prompt and light as when the hound is opening and the horn is wound careers the hunter's steed down the steep dell his course amain hath rivalled archer's shaft but ere the mound he could attain the rocks their shapeless form regain and mocking loud his labour vain the mountain spirits laughed far up the echoing dell was borne their wild unearthly shout of scorn wrath waxed the warrior am i then fooled by the enemies of men like a poor hind whose homeward way is haunted by malicious fay is triamain become your taunt devoe your scorn false fiends avaunt a weighty kirtle axe he bare the baleful braid so bright and square and the tough shaft of heban wood were oft in scottish gore imbrued backward his stately form he drew and at the rocks the weapon threw just where one crag's projected crest hung proudly balanced over the rest hurled with main force the weapon's shock rent a huge fragment of the rock if by mere strength twere hard to tell or if the blow dissolved some spell but down the headlong ruin came with cloud of dust and flash of flame down bank over bush its course was borne crushed lay the copse the earth was torn till stayed at length the ruin dread cumbered the torrent's rocky bed 
and bade the water's high swollen tide seek other passage for its pride when ceased that thunder triamain surveyed the mound's rude front again and lo the ruin had laid bare hewn in the stone a winding stair whose mossed and fractured steps might lend the means the summit to ascend and by whose aid the brave de Vaux began to scale those magic rocks and soon a platform won where the wild witchery to close within three lances length arose the castle of saint john no misty phantom of the air no meteor blazoned show was there in morning splendour full and fair the massive fortress shone embattled high and proudly towered shaded by ponderous flankers lowered the portal's gloomy way though for six hundred years and more its strength had brooked the tempest's roar the scutcheoned emblems which it bore had suffered no decay but from the eastern battlement a turret had made sheer descent and down in recent ruin rent in the mid torrent lay else over the castle's brow sublime insults of violence or of time unfelt had passed away in shapeless characters of yore the gate this stern inscription bore inscription patience waits the destined day strength can clear the cumbered way warrior who hast waited long firm of soul of sinew strong it is given to thee to gaze on the pile of ancient days never mortal builder's hand this enduring fabric planned sign and sigil word of power from the earth raised keep and tower view it over and pace it round rampart turret battled mound dare no more to cross the gate were to tamper with thy fate strength and fortitude were vain view it over and turn again that would i said the warrior bold if that my frame were bent and old and if thin blood dropped slow and cold as icicle in thaw but while my heart can feel it dance blithe as the sparkling wine of france and this good arm wields sword or lance i mock these words of awe he said the wicket felt the sway of his strong hand and straight gave way and with rude crash and jarring bray the rusty bolts withdraw but over the threshold as he strode and forward took the vaulted road an unseen arm with force amain the ponderous gate flung close again and rusted bolt and bar spontaneous took their place once more while the deep arch with sullen roar returned their surly jar now closed is the gin and the prey within by the rood of lanacost but he that would win the war-wolf's skin may rue him of his boast thus muttering on the warrior went by dubious light down steep descent unbarred unlocked unwatched a port led to the castle's outer court there the main fortress broad and tall spread its long range of bower and hall and towers of varied size wrought with each ornament extreme that gothic art in wildest dream a fancy could devise but full between the warrior's way and the main portal arch there lay an inner moat nor bridge nor boat affords de Vaux the means to cross the clear profound and silent fosse his arms aside in haste he flings cuirass of steel and hauberk rings and down falls helm and down the shield rough with the dints of many a field fair was his manly form and fair his keen dark eye and close curled hair when all unarmed save that the brand of well-proved metal graced his hand with naught to fence his dauntless breast but the close gibbon's under vest whose sullied buff the sable stains of holbork 
and of mail retains roland de vaux upon the brim of the broad moat stood prompt to swim accoutred thus he dared the tide and soon he reached the farther side and entered soon the hold and paced the hall whose walls so wide were blazoned all with feats of pride by warriors done of old in middle lists they counted here while trumpets seemed to blow and there in den or desert drear they quelled gigantic foe braved the fierce griffin in his ire or faced the dragon's breath of fire strange in their arms and strange in face heroes they seemed of ancient race whose deeds of arms and race and name forgotten long by later fame were here depicted to appall those of an age degenerate whose bold intrusion braved their fate in this enchanted hall for some short space the venturous knight with these high marvels fed his sight then sought the chamber's upper end where three broad easy steps ascend to an arched portal door in whose broad folding leaves of state was framed a wicket window grate and ere he ventured more the gallant knight took earnest view the grated wicket window through oh for his arms of martial weed had never mortal knight such need he spied a stately gallery all of snow-white marble was the wall the vaulting and the floor and contrast strange on either hand there stood arrayed in sable band four maids whom afric bore and each a libyan tiger led held by as bright and frail a thread as lucy's golden hair for the leash that bound these monsters dread was but of gossamer each maiden's short barbaric vest left all unclosed the knee and breast and limbs of shapely jet white was their vest and turbans fold on arms and ankles rings of gold in savage pomp were set a quiver on their shoulders lay and in their hand an assegai such and so silent stood they there that roland well nigh hoped he saw a band of statues rare stationed the gazer's soul to scare but when the wicket oped each grisly beast gan upward draw rolled his grim eye and spread his claw scented the air and licked his jaw while these weird maids in moorish tongue a wild and dismal warning sung rash adventurer bear thee back dread the spell of dahomey fear the race of zaharak daughters of the burning day when the whirlwind's gusts are wheeling ours it is the dance to braid zara's sands in pillars reeling join the measure that we tread when the moon has donned her cloak and the stars are red to see shrill when pipes the sad siroc music meet for such as we where the shattered columns lie showing carthage once had been if the wandering santon's eye our mysterious rites hath seen oft he cons the prayer of death to the nations preacher's doom asriel's brand hath left the sheaf muslims think upon the tomb ours the scorpion ours the snake ours the hydra of the fen ours the tiger of the brake all that plagues the sons of men ours the tempest's midnight rack pestilence that wastes by day dread the race of zaharak fear the spell of dahomey uncouth and strange the accents shrill rung those vaulted roofs among long it was ere faint and still died the far resounding song while yet the distant echoes roll 
the warrior communed with his soul when first i took this venturous quest i swore upon the rude neither to stop nor turn nor rest for evil or for good my forward path too well i ween lies yonder fearful ranks between for man unarmed tis bootless hope with tigers and with fiends to cope yet if i turn what waits me there save famine dire and fell despair other conclusion let me try since choose however i list i die forward lies faith and knightly fame behind are perjury and shame in life or death i hold my word with that he drew his trusty sword caught down a banner from the wall and entered thus the fearful hall on high each wayward maiden threw her swarthy arm with wild halloo on either side a tiger sprung against the leftward foe he flung the ready banner to engage with tangling folds the brutal rage the right-hand monster in mid-air he struck so fiercely and so fair through gullet and through spinal bone the trenchant blade hath sheerly gone his grisly brethren ramped and yelled but the slight leash their rage withheld whilst twixt their ranks the dangerous road firmly though swift the champion strode safe to the gallery's bound he drew safe past an open portal through and when against pursuit he flung the gate judge if the echoes rung onward his daring course he bore while mixed with dying growl and roar wild jubilee and loud hooray pursued him on his venturous way hurrah hurrah our watch is done we hail once more the tropic sun pallid beams of northern day farewell farewell hurrah hooray five hundred years over this cold glen hath the pale sun come round again foot of man till now hath ne'er dared to cross the hall of fear warrior thou whose dauntless heart gives us from our ward to part be as strong in future trial where resistance is denial now for afric's glowing sky zwenga wide and atlas high zaharak and dahomey mount the winds hurrah hooray the wizard song at distance died as if in ether borne astray while through waste halls and chambers wide the knight pursued his steady way till to a lofty dome he came that flashed with such a brilliant flame as if the wealth of all the world were there in rich confusion hurled for here the gold in sandy heaps with duller earth in corporate sleeps was there in ingots piled and there coined badge of empery it bare yonder huge bars of silver lay dimmed by the diamond's neighbouring ray like the pale moon in morning day and in the midst four maidens stand the daughters of some distant land their hue was of the dark red dye that fringes oft a thunder sky their hands palmetto baskets bear and cotton fillets bound their hair slim was their form their mien was shy to earth they bent the humbled eye folded their arms and suppliant kneeled and thus their proffered gifts revealed chorus see the treasures merlin piled portion meet for arthur's child bathe in wealth's unbounded stream wealth that avarice never could dream first maiden see these clots of virgin gold severed from the sparry mould nature's mystic alchemy in the mind thus bade them lie and their orient smile can win kings to stoop and saints to sin second maiden see these pearls that long have slept these were tears by naiads wept for the loss of marinel tritons in the silver shell treasured them till hard and white as the teeth of amphitrite third maiden, 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 maiden. 
does a livelier hue delight here are rubies blazing bright here the emeralds fairy green and the topaz glows between here their varied hues unite in the changeful chrysolite fourth maiden 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 leave these gems of poorer shine leave them all and look on mine while their glories i expand shade thine eyebrows with thy hand midday sun and diamonds blaze blind the rash beholder's gaze chorus warrior seize the splendid store would twere all our mountains bore we should never in future story read peru thy perished glory calmly and unconcerned the knight waved aside the treasures bright gentle maidens rise i pray bar not thus my destined way let these boasted brilliant toys braid the hair of girls and boys bid your streams of gold expand over proud london's thirsty land devoe of wealth saw never need save to purvey him arms and steed and all the ore he dined to hoard inlays his helm and hilts his sword thus gently parting from their hold he left unmoved the dome of gold and now the morning sun was high devoe was weary faint and dry when lo a plashing sound he hears a gladsome signal that he nears some frolic water run and soon he reached a courtyard square where dancing in the sultry air tossed high aloft a fountain fair was sparkling in the sun on right and left a fair arcade in long perspective view displayed alleys and bowers for sun or shade but full in front a door low-browed and dark seemed as it led to the lone dwelling of the dead whose memory was no more here stopped de vaux an instant's space to bathe his parched lips and face and marked with well-pleased eye refracted in the fountain stream in rainbow hues the dazzling beam of that gay summer sky his senses felt a mild control like that which lulls the weary soul from contemplation high relaxing when the ear receives the music that the greenwood leaves make to the breezes sigh and oft in such a dreamy mood the half-shut eye can frame fair apparitions in the wood as if the nymphs of field and flood in gay procession came are these of such fantastic mould seen distant down the fair arcade these maids enlinked in sisterfold who late at bashful distance stayed now tripping from the green wood shade nearer the musing champion draw and in a pause of seeming awe again stand doubtful now ah that sly pause of witching powers that seems to say to please be ours be yours to tell us how their hue was of the golden glow that sons of kandahar bestow over which in slight suffusion flows a frequent tinge of paley rose their limbs were fashioned fair and free in nature's justest symmetry and wreathed with flowers with odours graced their raven ringlets reached the waist in eastern pomp its gliding pale the henna lent each shapely nail and the dark sumer gave the eye more liquid and more lustrous dye the spotless veil of misty lawn in studied disarrangement drawn the form and bosom over to win the eye or tempt the touch for modesty showed all too much too much yet promised more gentle knight a wild delay thus they sung thy toilsome way while we pay the duty due to our master and to you over avarice over fear love triumphant led thee here warrior list to us for we are slaves to love are friends to thee though no treasured gems have we to proffer on the bended knee though we boast nor arm nor heart for the assegai or dart 
swains allow each simple girl ruby lip and teeth of pearl or if dangers more you prize flatterers find them in our eyes stay then gentle warrior stay rest till evening steal on day stay o oh stay in yonder bowers we will braid thy locks with flowers spread the feast and fill the wine charm thy ears with sounds divine weave our dances till delight yield to languor day to night then shall she you most approve sing the lays that best you love soft thy mossy couch shall spread watch thy pillow prop thy head till the weary night be o'er gentle warrior wouldst thou more wouldst thou more fair warrior she is slave to love and slave to thee oh do not hold it for a crime in the bold hero of my rhyme the stoic look and meet rebuke he lacked the heart or time as round the band of sirens trip he kissed one damsel's laughing lip and pressed another's proffered hand spoke to them all in accents bland but broke their magic circle through kind maids he said adieu adieu my fate my fortune forward lies he said and vanished from their eyes but as he dared that darksome way still heard behind their lovely lay fair flower of courtesy depart go where the feelings of the heart with the warm pulse in concord move go where virtue sanctions love downward de vaux through darksome ways and ruined vaults has gone till issue from their bewildered maze or safe retreat seemed none and even the dismal path he strays grew worse as he went on the cheerful sun for living air foul vapours rise and mine fires glare whose fearful light the dangers showed that dogged him on that dreadful road deep pits and lakes of waters dun they showed but showed not how to shun these scenes of desolate despair these smothering clouds of poisoned air how gladly had de vaux exchanged though twere to face yon tigers ranged nay soothful bards have said so perilous his state seemed now he wished him under arbour bow with asia's willing maid when joyful sound at distance near a trumpet flourished loud and clear and as it ceased a lofty lay seemed thus to chide his lagging way son of honour theme of story think on the reward before ye danger darkness toil despise tis ambition bids thee rise he that would her heights ascend many a weary step must wend hand and foot and knee he tries thus ambition's minions rise lag not now though rough the way fortune's mood brooks no delay grasp the boon that's spread before ye monarch's power and conqueror's glory it ceased advancing on the sound a steep ascent the wanderer found and then a turret stair nor climbed he far its steepy round till fresher blew the air and next a welcome glimpse was given that cheered him with the light of heaven at length his toil had won a lofty hall with trophies dressed where as to great imperial guest four maidens stood whose crimson vest was bound with golden zone of europe seemed the damsels all the first a nymph of lively gall whose easy step and laughing eye her borrowed air of awe belie the next a maid of spain dark-eyed dark-haired sedate yet bold white ivory skin and tress of gold her shy and bashful comrade told the daughter of almain these maidens bore a royal robe with crown with sceptre and with globe emblems of empery the fourth a space behind them stood and leant upon a harp in mood of minstrel ecstasy 
of merry england she in dress like ancient british druidess her hair an azure fillet bound her graceful vesture swept the ground and in her hand displayed a crown did that fourth maiden hold but unadorned with gems and gold of glossy laurel made at once to brave de Vaux knelt down these foremost maidens three and proffered sceptre robe and crown liegedom and seigneury over many a region wide and fair destined they said for arthur's heir but homage would he none rather he said de Vaux would ride a warden of the borderer side in plate and mail then robed in pride a monarch's empire own rather far rather would he be a free-born knight of england free than sit on despot's throne so passed he on when that fourth maid as starting from a trance upon the harp her finger laid her magic touch the chords obeyed their soul awaked at once song of the fourth maiden quake to your foundations deep stately towers and bannered keep bid your vaulted echoes moan as the dreaded step they own fiends that wait on merlin's spell hear the footfall mark it well spread your dusky wings abroad boon ye for your homeward road it is his the first who e'er dared the dismal hall of fear his who hath the snares defied spread by pleasure wealth and pride quake to your foundations deep bastion huge and turret steep tremble keep and totter tower this is gwyneth's waking hour thus while she sung the venturous knight has reached a bower where milder light through crimson curtains fell such softened shade the hill receives her purple veil when twilight leaves upon its western swell that bower the gazer to bewitch has wondrous store of rare and rich as ever was seen with eye for there by magic skill i wis form of each thing that living is was limbed in proper dye all seemed to sleep the timid hare on form the stag upon his lair the eagle in her eerie fair between the earth and sky but what of pictured rich and rare could win de Vaux's eye glance where deep slumbering in the fatal chair he saw king arthur's child doubt and anger and dismay from her brow had passed away forgot was that fell tourney day for as she slept she smiled it seemed that the repentant seer her sleep of many a hundred year with gentle dreams beguiled that form of maiden loveliness twixt childhood and twixt youth that ivory chair that sylvan dress the arms and ankles bear express of lyulph's tale the truth still upon her garments hem vanoc's blood made purple gem and the warder of command cumbered still her sleeping hand still her dark locks dishevelled flow from net of pearl over breast of snow and so fair the slumberer seems that de Vaux impeached his dreams vapid all and void of might hiding half her charms from sight motionless a while he stands folds his arms and clasps his hands trembling in his fitful joy doubtful how he should destroy long enduring spell doubtful too when slowly rise dark fringed lids of gwyneth's eyes what these eyes shall tell st george st mary can it be that they will kindly look on me gently low the warrior kneels soft that lovely hand he steals soft to kiss and soft to clasp but the warder leaves her grasp lightning flashes rolls the thunder gwyneth startles from her sleep totters tower and trembles keep burst the castle walls asunder 
fierce and frequent were the shocks melt the magic halls away but beneath their mystic rocks in the arms of bold de Vaux, safe the princess lay safe and free from magic power blushing like the rose's flower opening to the day and round the champion's brows were bound the crown that druidess had wound of the green laurel bay and this was what remained of all the wealth of each enchanted hall the garland and the dame but where should warrior seek the mead due to high worth for daring deed except from love and fame end of part three recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter dot wordpress dot com conclusion to the bridal of triamain this is part four of the bridal of triamain by sir walter scott this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nathan at antipodean writer dot wordpress dot com the bridal of triamain by sir walter scott part four conclusion my lucy when the maid is won the minstrel's task thou knowest is done and to require of bard that to his dregs the tale should run were ordinance too hard our lovers briefly be it said wedded as lovers want to wed when tale or play is o'er lived long and blessed loved fond and true and saw a numerous race renew the honours that they bore know too that when a pilgrim strays in morning mist or evening maze along the mountain lone that fairy fortress often mocks his gaze upon the castled rocks of the valley of st john but never man since brave de Vaux the charmed portal won tis now a vain elusive show that melts whenever the sunbeams glow or the fresh breeze hath blown but see my love where far below our lingering wheels are moving slow the whiles up gazing still our menials eye our steepy way marvelling perchance what whim can stay our steps when eve is sinking grey on this gigantic hill so think the vulgar life and time ring all their joys in one dull chime of luxury and ease and oh beside these simple knaves how many better born are slaves to such coarse joys as these dead to the nobler sense that glows when nature's grander scenes unclose but lucy we will love them yet the mountain's misty coronet the greenwood and the wold and love the more that of their maze adventure high of other days by ancient bards is told bringing perchance like my poor tale some moral truth in fiction's veil nor love them less that over the hill the evening breeze as now comes chill my love shall wrap the warm and fearless of the slippery way while safe she trips the heathy rack shall hang on arthur's arm end of part four end of the bridal of triamain by sir walter scott recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter dot wordpress dot com